Ah, painting the rubber edges around the road wheels of tanks. Such nightmare fuel. Well, hello, Glue Troopers. Maxim Axis Models here. The wife and I were over at Hobby Lobby today where I got some more of the little alligator clip sticks with the bases because you can never have too many of those things, especially when you're working on tanks and road wheels. And I had been talking with Trey over at Trey's Models, and we were talking about the black trim you have to paint around all the road wheels on virtually every tank. And he goes, yep, that's nightmare fuel, not because it's hard, simply because it's tedious. And he's not kidding. Next to uh, rigging a biplane, it's probably one of the most tedious chores out there. But you're, everybody's going to see it. It's right there front and center. So it's got to be well done, at least on the side of the wheels that's going to face the, the person looking at the model. There are a lot of different ways to go about it. Depending, of course, on what kind of tank it is. When you're dealing with German tanks with interleaved road wheels, at first blush, it doesn't like they have that many, but they actually kind of do because you have three layers of them. So we're looking at, you know, 15 or 16 wheels per side. And most of them can be viewed. Now, I don't worry too much about the part of the wheel that faces inside towards the tank because unless you're, you know, in competition, they're going to pick it up and look at the bottom. That really doesn't show, but what's visible to the outside is really important. And of course, your eye will go right to a little bit of black paint that's out of place quicker than anything else. I know a lot of guys like to uh, go ahead and paint the road wheels black, then use a stencil to carve out so they can paint the inside with an airbrush or a brush, however they want to do it. Um, some people actually use a preformed stencils. I've done that with moderate success. The problem is, of course, a lot of times that the uh, if you're using an airbrush, it's not so bad. But if you try to rattle can it, uh, you got with that high pressure, you have a good chance of, of getting uh, uh, seepage. And I have actually gotten uh, recently into just hand painting them. I literally just uh, rotate the wheel while holding the brush. That's one technique I've used. It seems to work. For, that's how I did the panther. And, it came out okay. And of course, if you're using acrylic paints, you can go in just with a toothpick or something and, and clean up any little spots that got out of place. Uh, you can even use a hint of sandpaper around the rim, however you want to do it. If you're making a diorama or weathering the kit, you can hide a multitude of sins with mud. In fact, I think uh, mud, dirt, grime, rucksack, sandbags, uh, spare track, those things are God's gift to covering boo-boos. <laughs> but... Painting the road wheels to me is, is one of the more tedious ch uh, chores. And when you get into some tanks, like some of the post-war American experimental stuff, like the T29, T30, T34, these things had eight sets of road wheels on each side and a whole bunch of return rollers up top. So that'll keep you real busy. I think one of the things I've come to appreciate about Russian armor is a lot of it only has, uh, you know, five sets or six sets of uh, double road wheels. And the Russians didn't use as much rubber as a lot of people from what I can tell. So it's, it's a little quicker and easier to do Russian tanks because they don't have that much trouble with metal on metal contact. Uh, but uh, that is the one part of the tank that seems to be everybody's eye roll. Oh, paint the road wheels. And Sherman's not too bad, uh, you know, because that uh, vertical and horizontal volute systems, uh, there just aren't that many wheels on it. And... I believe you're looking at uh, six sets of road wheels on each side and about three return sets of uh, return rollers. So not too bad. And I do need to get started on that Sherman I have on the desk. In fact, uh, that's uh, these are the road wheels to it right here. And, uh, and what I've gotten in the habit of doing is painting the tank first and the black trim is the last thing I put on. But I know some people do it completely reverse order. That works. I might try it that way just to do something different. Shoot the road wheels solid black then uh, put the stencil over and shoot the inside green and just see how that works out. It might, it might be a simpler, easier way to do it. I'm sure all you guys who are armor builders have your own techniques for that. And some folks just don't worry about it and they just got to heck with it. And uh, <laughs> yeah. um, it just depends on what you enjoy with your uh, tank model building. Tanks, generally speaking, are pretty easy to paint. Most American tanks are more or less just olive drab. And 
Of course, you can get into the cool schemes with some of the German and Japanese armor, and even British. But, uh, you know, you can go complicated or you can go simple. And uh, one thing uh, that I, when I was in the Army, all of our equipment that was bolted onto vehicles got spray painted right beside it. I mean, you would, all the tools, the entrenching, or the uh, Pioneer tools and everything are always painted. Uh, so, you know, you can glue the stuff on and just go over it with the airbrush and that would be okay. Or you can airbrush the tank uh, vehicle, put the stuff on and then and paint it differently. However you want to do it. There's really kind of no wrong way because I've seen just about every combination you can imagine. Like I say, American vehicles, at least the ones we had that were in World War II that were lar- largely just olive drab was pretty simple. Once we started camouflaging them, you know, in the 60s and 70s, it got a little more complicated then. But and, you know, of course, just make it what you want it to be. And where tanks are concerned, I do I do think the black road wheel trim makes it pop because a lot of tanks are just one color otherwise. And uh, well, that's just me. Road wheels on tanks, painting them, it's kind of both the fun part and the not fun part. All wrapped up into one round little piece. Well, a whole bunch of them. And, uh, yeah, if I'm buying a kit and I see one with a whole bunch of road wheels and one that maybe doesn't have quite so many... I'm not saying that would determine what I would uh, purchase, but all of the things being equal, couldn't make up my mind. Yeah, I could see that maybe, you know, uh, sliding the scale towards the simpler build. Just depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. Well, that's all I got for right now. I had not got any building done today. We had too many things going on. And tomorrow I'm back to work. Uh, sadly, no live stream this weekend. In fact, I will probably be gone for seven to ten days. And maybe I'll get some stuff out from the road. Guys, you take care of yourselves. And as always, Model One. Underneath the lantern by the barrack gate, darling, I remember the way you used to wait. Twas there that you whispered tenderly that you loved me, you'd always be. My lily of the lamp light, my own lily Marley. Time would come for roll call, time for us to part. Darling, I'd caress you and press you to my heart. And there, neath that far off lantern light, I'd hold you tight, we'd kiss. Good night, my lily of the lamp light, my own lily Marlene. Orders came for sailing somewhere over there. All confined to barracks was more than I could bear. I knew you were waiting in the street. I heard your feet, but could not meet My lily of the lamp light My own lily Marley Resting in a billet just behind the line Even though we're parted, your lips are close to mine You wait where that lantern softly gleams Your sweet face seems to haunt my dreams My lily of the lamp light My own lily Marley My lily of the lamp light My own